Hello, everyone. It's my absolute pleasure to be here today, and I'm thrilled uh, to have the opportunity to speak and host the session at the third installment of Asia Cosmos DB Conference. Uh, as someone who's deeply uh, passionate about all things Asia, I'm eager to share my knowledge and insights with you today. Thank you for having me, and I hope you enjoy my presentation on the topic Use Managed Identity with Asia Cosmos DB to increase security and deployment automation. With Managed Identities and Asia Cosmos DB, we can actually improve our security and streamline those deployments uh, and the process behind them, for example. So th today, let's have a deeper look. Let's have a talk about the benefits of using them and explore practical examples how you can actually uh, use and implement these strategies in your own applications. So let's dive in. Just a quick word about myself, um, just a brief info. Uh, my name is Martin Pitzing. I'm a solutions architect architect with Asia, uh, ACP, sorry, with ACP in Austria, based in Vienna, and have been working for with Asia for the uh, more than five years now. Currently, I'm focusing on data analytics and data analytics platforms in Asia, infrastructures, code containerization, and applied cloud native and zero trust principles. So let's start with a diagram to tell you more about today's topic. Imagine you have this kind of like architecture in place consisting only of like an Azure DevOps and pipelines, a service connection of your choice, a subscription that features, for example, an Azure Data Factory, a single managed identity, and of course, Azure Cosmos DB that is used as a data store or for, and of course, a web or uh, API endpoint that uses that you would use actually to retrieve data from. As you can see, uh, from for example, like we are using here data connections that are managed by managed identity and the authentication is done completely in the managed identity context. And this is what I want to talk about today for me because Azure Cosmos DB offers, covers like all of the requirements I have with a modern workload or any kind of like data storage because it's so ubiquitous and easy to use and enables me to have a hassle-free work through its distributed database service, covers everything. When working with the NoSQL API, Azure Cosmos DB actually offers quite a few already built-in database scoped roles, means you can already apply these built-in roles to a managed identity. And that enables developers as yourself or maybe your team, for example, to completely re-ramp those architectures that you might have already in place and that work with credentials and to move from there to a completely like credential connection string or secrets free uh, environment and architecture. And today we're gonna talk to, about this in detail and you'll be seeing how simplified the setup with a, a match identity and the API works in different use cases and practice. So meaning, just to reiterate here. So this is for a true end-to-end -end deployment scenario, meaning I have the capability to have no prerequisites done prior to any deployment and I have no interactions later on so I can use it as an end-to-end -end, uh, deployment pipeline and of course a continuous deployment cycle. So for example, just to see for example as a difference, if you would use a SQL, uh, SQL um, like, like a SQL database on a SQL server, you had have to have at least log into that service once and uh, as a user role to enable a managed identity, for example, for the same purpose, because it's just part of the setup. You can't go around it. So that actually makes it more complex. And of course you have users and roles already in place that you might not even need afterwards, or that are just like there and have to tend to them, for example. So it's not really truly an end-to-end -end continuous deployment. And that's what I was lo actually looking for and I found it with Azure Cosmos DB. So looking at another sample, for example, in solution architecture for today's session, um, you can also re like replace the data factory with any like front phasing or, or integration service. In this case, for example, I would be using Azure Container Apps, as a sample behind that, <clears throat> um, to have the connection to Azure Cosmos to be done, uh, authenticated through a managed identity. And that managed identity would also be used, for example, to have the container registry implementation to push and a continuous deployment method way from, for example, your DevOps and pipeline service connections into your container registry and from there push it onto container apps 
to have already the latest image in place or the image and the revisions that you need, for example, for your workload. And remember, you know, with Azure Cosmos DB and the API, for example, you already have built in data. Uh, data yeah, you have already database kept rules in place. And what I personally like then is to use these features for any type of use cases when I'm, for example, like just like developing or looking at proof of concepts where I need a quick or a test load data store that I can actually work with to test, for example, what is coming in or when the, the data model is uh, evolving, if, you, if it's not comprehensive yet, for example. So you can work with these things and that's what I actually like about using these kind of setups with my clients, for example. Another one would be just, a, as, you, as I said earlier, you could just like replace the uh, integration part or the container apps part here with a function app. And as you can see, for example, you could use exactly the same setup, even for example, with container registry to use exactly the same thing in any context that you need. So that's the, uh, that's the, the, the cool part about it. So let's go on and have managed identities. A short brief view. At that one, as, as you might remember, there's four security uh, principles in Azure, and one of them is a managed identity, which exists as a system of user assigned managed identity. Just in brief, those things use a credential based, uh, a certificate based authentication. I'm sorry. And with the Azure Active Directory, Azure takes, or Microsoft in this case, actually covers all of these features for you. If there's like a rotation and the credentials, if there's a certificate rotation, everything's covered. From that perspective, you don't have to take care of it. It's one of those business secrets that is kept in place, for example, to have it really hard to, to actually create uh, or like distract any service behind that one, for example. So that's uh, that's a given, for example. And if you use that one in Azure context, you get the capabilities to actually work on the management plane as like create, read, update, include functionality. And for certain things, for example, data actions, you actually get these features as well. And that makes it very easy to use it and authenticate against Azure services in the backend, for example. And with the API calls that are generated with this one, you can actually use them to use in, for example, Azure Sentinel as your CM tool or any other like security service. And of course, audit training part. As a best practice, I would actually recommend using this on the resource scope only as equivalent, for example, for a service account. So, for this part, let's switch over to just see how this one actually, when it's deployed, looks from that perspective. So I'm looking uh, right now at my data factory that I like showed from this for, uh, a little bit earlier. And let's have a look at the settings. So that means, let's have a, a quick look at the Azure Cosmos DB uh, that I just uh, set up today with the NoSQL API, as you can see, from the authentication types, there's a couple of one that we can use. For example, there's account keys, service principle, which are like well established, their system and user assigned managed identity. If I use the user assigned manage management identity, I actually applied a um, built in role to this. Um, I'm just gonna scroll down a bit. There's the Cosmos DB account, URI endpoint, and a database. Uh, I'm using here for this one, actually, that you can see here, actually, I'm using the uh, a built-in role for the contributor part that offers the read metadata role. That's why I can read the database name on the scope of the account, for example, and I could scope it down to the container or the database you exactly to your liking. And it's got the read and uh, write to the container data action role. So that means I can actually use this one to write data to Azure Cosmos DB and not have any other authentication because there's no credentials. Everything's managed here. Um, to have that actually in place. So if I press on test connection, you're gonna see this one is actually connecting uh, successful. Same happens with a managed identity against, for example, an API endpoint, in this case, a REST endpoint that I, just for practice purposes, I'm using Graph API access. And as you can see, it's just like gonna pass a, a link service base URL inside. And uh, as you can see, there's a user managed identity is same using its own credentials with Azure um, Active Directory. And that's all there is, for example. And if you want to see, for example, if you go to the enterprise application object for that managed identity, you can actually assign, for example, graph API, um, um, API permissions. For example, for that use case, I'm just looking at a couple of user data uh, from a reader's perspective and use that thing uh, in this case. So if I'm going to test that one, 
as you can see, it's just going to pass. It's already passed in because I, I did it earlier. And uh, just test the connection. You can see it's successful. And there you go. So there's no there's no keyword. There's no secrets. There's no nothing you actually actually have to manage. Um, this one is actually uh, quite working. So if I go to the debug one, as you can see, it would create a new run. Uh, uh, it could create a new run. And as you can see, it's already queuing. And after some time, we're going to see it's successful and succeeded and has written data to my data store with the API in the backend. So let's switch back. Give it a couple of seconds more. Succeeded. There you go. As you can see. So and that's all there is. There's no more resources. That's all there is to, to manage for this kind of application. And it works well, for example, for container apps or functions or Kubernetes service. You name it, these things that use a managed identity with, for example, a data store that offers like already built in roles for the data action part, it works like a charm. So why is actually today set up a bit better or a lot better than the previous one? You know, what makes that actually better is, and as you can see, for example, I really like split it in that way. You know, the common practice that I face when I'm talking to, uh, to clients is normally key-based authentication and a complete set, of course, of key rotation policy, um, policies that you have to have in place. For example, they're just necessary to have all of all of the time a control over who's authenticating with what key and uh, these keys are rotating and um, to have that alongside a comprehensive set of other policies in place to just keep the pipelines there. So it's a lot of work to have those release pipelines in sync, to have these keys in sync, to have an active key management. There, there you go and uh, work this one. So however, if we're going to a different setup, for example, for implementing managed identities, we can actually save a couple of benefits there. For example, we could use a truly infrastructure's code approach to just de deploying our resources uh, end to end. Managed identities follow a least privileged principle. Just to reiterate, you can scope data actions to exactly your liking, to exactly the use case. It just has, doesn't have to have more rights than it use, uses, and that actually applies to any zero trust. Uh, principles that you might have in place. And just to have a practical example, uh, this one is actually to the bottom left, as you can see, this one is taken from a Microsoft sample that is readily available that actually uses uh, managed identities for deployment purposes, but relies on the connection strings. And this excerpt, as you can see there, for example, I have actually taken that from the de uh, deployment template on the resource group that was uh, actually created in there. And you can see it's a clear, um, clear text representation of the user and the password that is used in the connection string with the MongoDB uh, endpoint that is used here, for example. So let's have a recap of today and what we've learned and seen today. Using managed identity as a primary connection establishing method enables setups that are completely free of, for example, passwords, keys, and management thereof. As Cosmos, uh, Azure Cosmos DB offers a complete scalable and elastic infrastructure that actually is very easy to manage. And that is actually a setup that I would recommend using together with managed identities and for, for example, quick proof of concept, or if you require uh, any kind of like data store that enables you to quickly rely and scale on workloads that you don't know yet. For example. Thank you all for joining me today to learn more about this strategy and with Azure Cosmos DB to increase security and deployment automation. I hope you found the session very informative and useful for your own projects and applications. If you have any questions or would like to discuss this further, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, tell me about your experiences. How would you use your managed identity or Azure Cosmos DB setups? And thank you for your time and have a great day.